It's not often I get coconut juice freshly hacked, and I'm sure that machete isn't dull. Or meet a British expat who decided to relocate to Honduras with its abundance of sunshine. We have all the beautiful people here today. Huh? High above the cloud forest, one escapes the Honduran heat where a white water rafting experience awaits me. Between you and I, I'm not a fan of anything with water. Hidden amongst the tropical jungles of Honduras lies a massive coral structure built to protect the new colonizers. What was originally a Spanish castle on the Caribbean beaches of Honduras is now nearly a half mile inland. How did it get there? This is different. This is not square. This is triangular. I've watched the evolution of American public high schools. With 30 years teaching, there is very little I've experienced, good or bad. Students are the same regardless. I've listened to my students who come from Central America and learned from them stories of their homeland. What I've learned and discovered is far superior to what is being seen on the nightly news cycle. Come along, travel with purpose, explore the best of Central America. On today's episode, we're going to be exploring a fort right here in Honduras, that of Fort Fernando in the city of Omoa. From here, we're going to be exploring a whitewater rafting experience that awaits me. What's interesting about what I'm doing is that I produce all of these episodes on my own budget. There's no Hollywood hype. I travel with purpose. I explore the best of Central America, so perhaps others can come down here and enjoy and experience what I'm here presenting to you. These are great countries down here in Central America, and we have much to share with you. Let's start off first with Fort Fernando. I'm right here at the San Fernando Fort of the department in Omoa, and it's a beautiful place to visit. And I'm with my tour guide and new friend, Julio. Julio, yep. good morning. Nice to meet you. Good morning. Nice to meet you too. Likewise. Glad to be here. This is uh, 263 years old, this fortress. And this is still standing? Yeah. Or has this been renovated well, or? Yeah. That is because in that time, in 1759, the, uh, the Spanish, they used that fortress in that time. The fortress in Trujillo, the fortress in uh, Guatemala, in Panama, mm -hmm. and in Nicaragua. But that place in 1759 was a lot of people in the, in the Caribbean Ocean, or pirates, a lot of pirates. That's why they need another place to store all the commerce that come from Central America. I'm thinking yeah. pirate, pirates of the Caribbean, Johnny Caribbean, Depp kind yeah. of pirates. Caribbean, with their, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, got it, yeah. yeah. The building here has a sense of regalness to it, as in if it is, I can, I can begin to imagine the opulence of it yeah. with the paint and the colors and everything. Or just when the pirates attack him by land. These were all in use. Yeah. These were used, were, these were actually fired yeah. to protect. To protect the so there was yeah. war here at some point in time. Yeah. Only opened a holy ship in that time because this fortress was attacked with the wooden ships in that time. That's why they don't exploit the, the cannibals. Mm -hmm. But at first, they put the gunpowder inside in the um, mount. So they're, yeah. they're literally going, I, when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking you open it up, you put the, no, I'm thinking World War II with no. the little, no, 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 no. no. The, they they go around yeah. here yeah. and they're, they're putting in the... First, the gunpowder, yeah, for here, first. And the cannibal here in mount. Uh-huh. And the holes, uh, well, they don't have a hole because... And these, yes. so how often were these used in, in fighting or warfare? Uh, well, they used uh, the cannons in that time on the, on the part, and they put the cannons in carts in that mm -hmm. time. That's why I, I tell you, they first uh, introduced first the gunpowder, the cannonball in mouth, and in the holes, and uh, they put a fire. So these were placed up on the top uh, all the way yeah. around. This is the hole that they, they use uh, to put it. Uh, oh, the little yeah. the and fuse. Then they put a fire here. Ah. With the explosion okay. with the cannonball, so with the gunpowder. Okay. It's a shot with the cannonball. I was envisioning th yeah. the boggle, and then somebody has to kind of go in there and kind of just <laughs> light it and yeah. make sure their arm doesn't get cut. No. No. No, yeah. I would make a horrible soldier. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Here in this room, we can see the cannibals. Ah, Four, I do. Yeah. Oh. 4,800 cannibals inside. 
is you want to weigh the 12, 18, and 24 pounds, the cannonball biggest. Well, the cannonball don't explode, only open a hole in the ship in that time. But the, the, this fortress was attacked by, by land in that time, by English pirates. That's why they use the biggest ball that you can see in front. Then in 1909, this fortress was a jail. And uh, the, the Honduras government used that ball like a ball and chain for the prisoners. The prisoners, the prisoners work in this place with the dot and the foot. You ain't going it's, very far. It's You're going to stay yeah. close. Yeah. It's going to weigh to 55 pounds. I would, yeah, I would. yeah. The name here in Honduras in Spanish was uh, grillete in Spanish. Can, can we put pounds. one on you and see how you do with it? See if yeah. you can walk with it? Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> I think this is artwork. Coral. Yeah, that is coral. And so this is coral. Yeah. Was this etched to create artwork, uh, artwork or was it... Uh, no, it wasn't just that for or something went on to top build of a fortress. Yeah. Okay. No, so it wasn't, wasn't just in that time to build a fortress. It was the best material in that time. It's because the coral comes from the sea. For the salt water, the Spanish used that material in that time. So how far is the salt water from here? Uh, from here is like, a, well, okay, right now it's like 200 meters from here. To the beach? Right now, yeah, to the okay. beach. But in that time, it was like 50 meters. It's because in that time, the ocean was closer to the fortress. So this is right yeah. on the coast, yeah. originally. Originally. And now, over time, the yeah. land has... Yes. Okay, so it makes sense for... I see it. I see yeah. the coral. Here we can see the, the material that was used in that time to build a fortress. In that time, they used the coral. You this use man, yeah. what the land is available for you. Yeah. This was the, the commander run, just for the commander. Just for him, because the commander here in the fortress, he was very important in that time. Mm -hmm. In another room, 25 people in each room. This was just for him. I want my own room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we all want our own room. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And there is a church here. Yeah. Inside. Yes. Yeah, so what's for the Catholic Church? I can yeah. say it's got to be Catholic. What else yeah. could it be? It was an Episcopalian. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Which way are we going? Yeah. So, how many people were living here at this port at its height? You used like 400 people here in this place. In 1779, this fortress was attacked by English pirates. In that time, they only used 17 soldiers here to protect this fortress. In that time, the history explained that, is, that the Spanish lost the fortress for five weeks and they lost everything from here. The gold, silver, tobacco, cocoa, everything. Sir. Any idea how much gold was mined <coughs> and taken out of from this area around Honduras? Well, the history doesn't explain uh, that. Uh, you, you see these grand palaces in Europe yeah. and these castles and you see the gold, everything on yeah. and you, it came from here, Yeah, literally. Yes. It wasn't mined out of the hills surrounding Spain. It wasn't mined out of the hills of France. France, yeah. This stuff came from right here. Yeah. This is the chapel of the fortress. This is for the Catholic Church. It's because the, all the kings from Spain, they were Catholics in that time. It just yes. screams That's why Catholic, it's the church, it? yeah. It's, they it's, come to this place, to Honduras. They come to this place uh, to steal all the riches, to, uh, to kill the people. But they used the, the, uh, the chapel here in that time. You can still see the you can see the layout. It's still very much the priest and the grand ornate procession that they all come through in the altar at the front, and yep. people are all bowing and they're doing their prayers. It's very classic yeah. of what the Catholic Church was classic, all about. Yeah. In this place, they use the echo, but here it is different because because inside is small and outside is a big and have a hole in the size. When somebody talks inside, all the echo comes to upside. It's very, very different. Makes it's sense. The, here in this place, the echo is more clear. Yes. Yes. And the wrong rooms, not. It's a design because you didn't have microphones back in the day, so the yeah. echo concept was able to expand the voice out. Do you sing? Um, something. Ave Maria, por favor. Oh, no. <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> yeah. If you're wondering where that sound, that is my cameraman singing behind the camera. <laughs> you hear the echo? Maria. Impressive. <laughs> Impressive. Should we have a round of applause for him? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a, I wear hearing aids. Mm -hmm. So for a person who wears hearing aids, the last place you want to be is in a room like this with echo. Yeah. But in this case, you're right. There is a difference between this room here and the ones that we've started off where it's actually okay. 
This is a cushion for officers in that time. This cushion have oven in the middle, two minutes to the out part, and the holes in the sides was uh, to store the food in that time. Sure. The food for the uh, slaves in that time was only bread and water. I'm sorry, bread and bread water? Bread and water, yeah, for and the slaves. It's because in that time, in this place, to build this fortress, the Spanish used 650 African slaves here in this yeah. How many African slaves were here? Uh, 650. 650 African 650, slaves, yeah. in addition to the warriors, the soldiers from either England or Spain. Yeah. Oops. What happened here? Okay. Whoa. This is one impact of cannibals. The, I, yeah. I see a circle. Yeah. I see a... Is it one impact of cannibals of the first war between Spanish and English? The English pirates retired the fortress attacking by land, taking the Spanish by surprise. So the, where is the ocean? The ocean is over here. On this side. Yeah. So this is land over this here. Land. Yeah. So they came in from around. Yeah. And oh. they attacked the fortress. The shot was over the wall. That's why we can see this hole here and another hole in the odd part. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. In that time, it is the, the... And the African slaves that were here, yeah. those that were enslaved, they must have lived. I would like to assume that they were also living inside this compound, but I suspect the answer is that those who were enslaved working on the part yeah. of this fort probably we're not inside here, they're living no. off, of yeah. course. Yeah. Okay, in the middle we can see that, that well. The well was used to extrude the sweet water, but for the clouds of the sea, they obtained salt water in that time, and sweet water. That's why they recall the rainwater, yeah. The rainwater from the odd part, and they use it here, in this place, two holes, to store the water in so, that time. So, do these trenches have anything to do with that water getting in here? And it, it would just all drain out and back yeah. into the, okay. Yes. Modern day sewer system. Yeah, sure. Yeah. The rainwater, rainwater from the odd part. Got it. In the containers here. Okay. And they use that holes to store the water. And uh, in that time, they used uh, the water to, to drink in that time. Mm -hmm. But uh, they purify the water here because they use in the middle a filter to purify the water with a grab of charcoal and sand. I'm sure it wasn't clean water. Yeah. That it's, you, you live with it. Yeah. Yeah. This is the governor room. Just for the governor, just for him, because the governor here in this place was very, very important. Uh, that's why the governor had this kitchen, just for him, just for him, this kitchen. And the governor had one person that uh, tested food one hour before. If the food had a poison, they the first person that tested food uh, in that time. Don't die, the governor. It was a good job in that time. Food tester. <laughs> food, yeah. yeah. If it's good, okay. <laughs> Don't drink the Kool-Aid. Yeah. This is the building material that was used. Yeah. Part of the building. And it's still holding up, even... 263 years later. Yeah. And this could last easily another 263 years later. Mm -hmm. Why is there a ramp? Uh, they used the ramp to move the cannons in that time. Ah, they, that's yeah. how, they got, how the cannons yeah. got up. Okay. They put the cannons in carts. Uh, they used the horses and African slaves in that time to move the cannons. Wow. This is huge. I just have this image of kids on skateboards. Yeah. Seeing this, just going absolutely yeah. above course they can't yeah. do that. Okay. No. <laughs> I, okay. I can just see kids just kind of skateboarding all the way down. Yeah, yeah. No, you can't do that here. And the, the, you can see the West Tower also. So each of these towers was where the, the watchmen, the guards, whatever you yeah. call But the cannons were not, I, I see these little cutouts, right, like right here. Yeah. Or mm -hmm. They didn't put a cannon here. And they can just, yeah. There's a reason why they stayed there. Yeah. 6,000 pounds is a lot. Yeah. Wow. So where's the ocean? For here we can sit just ocean. right over that yeah so in the olden days obviously there were no trees here there was nothing no. the ocean was all was quick water 10 second yep. walk away yeah. today is probably more a 10 minute walk away yeah this is history it's, yeah this it's i mean it, I, I don't want to glorify history or anything like that but i do want to glorify the fact that honduras has some yeah. impressive history to it Granted, it is in amongst the ideas of the Spanish conquistadors and the killings and the murders and the expansion of the Spanish Empire. I get that. But the fact that this is so uh, well preserved yeah. and you, con you contrast that with American history, uh, you know, and you look at those buildings, a lot of those original buildings are, it's just wood, yeah. you know, or it's stonemason work in the later periods of American history. But this is... This is still standing. <laughs> yeah. Mm. It's a place uh, surrounded by water and alligators inside. But it wasn't Honduras. Not here enough. 
I, I, just like the movies and yeah. the, the Hollywood movies you see with it's, the yeah. moats and the water and the alligators. Yeah, and like a little, yeah. It's not finished because in 1779 they lost the fortress for five weeks. When they obtained the fortress again, they don't have the money to finish the moat. That's why it never was a finish. And it's a good idea. It's excellent. Yeah. So this is a 6,000 pound. This yeah. is in remarkable condition. And I'm seeing the, the, the royal emblems. I'm seeing numbers here. And, and then this was the, what emblem would this be? Spanish? Yeah, it's the Spanish crown and uh, the name of uh, Fernando VI, the king of Spain. It's because Fernando VI gave the order to build this fortress here. That's why it's uh, F and R. It represents the Fernando VI, the king of Spain with the Spanish crown. I do see it. I do yeah. see the letters F right there. Yeah. And the king was uh, Fernando II, the king from Spain. And mm -hmm. uh, well, the king from Aragon is because it's a, uh, Aragon is a province from Spain. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Elizabeth Queen, the queen from uh, Castilla. It's brutal. Yeah. In the name of conquest, in the name of yeah. expanding your empire, it was nothing less than being a brutal mm -hmm. aspect of yeah. what you have to do to take over and market and a monopoly on this land here. Yeah. What a beautiful place. Yeah. And yeah. you're only 45 minutes away from San Pedro Sula. Sula, yeah. These, these journeys, these expeditions, these excursions from Spain's Spanish Empire over here was taking decades in between visits, yep. but the records kept being expanded on that. Julio, Mr. Quezada, you have been an amazing source of information to share with me the experiences of Fort Fernando right here in Omoa, and I could assure you it is nothing less than spectacular. Thank you so much. Okay. It has been a great deal to spend some time with Thank you this you. afternoon. After we completed filming, I hurried over for a coconut drink. Over the course of the day, the humidity kept getting to me and being kept hydrated was important. To travel from the Spanish castle of Fort Fernando to my next stop, Pico Bonito National Park in the Cloud Forest required driving 45 minutes back to the second largest Honduran city, San Pedro Sula, and then from there an additional two to three hours east towards the Caribbean coastal city of La Ceiba the gateway to the Bay Islands, Honduras. There is scheduled airport service between San Pedro Sula and La Ceiba, but we decided on a rental car for this excursion. In the city, roads are paved. However, in many Central American countries, it is common to drive on unimproved roads. This means in several locations, there aren't any asphalt or concrete, just rough gravel roadways marked with the occasional potholes. For this reason alone, I almost always encourage vacationers to rent an SUV that sits high off the ground. The road to Pico Bonito National Park is not treacherous in nature. It's fairly straightforward, punctuated with the occasional police force to check for identification. There's no cause for alarm as they're there to protect the visitors. Along the way, it isn't unusual to ex see extreme poverty, including families that may ask the equivalent of a dollar for their efforts to keep that section of the road in front of their homes smooth. Arriving at the Pico Bonito National Park, one is welcome to an ever so slightly cooler, less humid climate, complete with tropical birds, plants, and a very well-developed resort. High above the mountains in Honduras, above the maritime city of La Ceiba, is an eco-adventure's dream. Here on the Rio Canjijo, or the Canjijo River, is I've asked some guides from the Villas Pico Bonitos Whitewater Rafting Company to guide me on my first experience down this river. Let's see how I do. It's an adrenaline junkie that is just waiting. Listo? Vamos. dry from that amazing white water rafting experience with the Villas Pico Bonita White Water Rafting Company. I'm here at the resort itself. My name is Richard Adamson. 
Richard, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Ron. You have a fantastic resort here. Tell me a little bit about it. How long have you been here? Thank you. We uh, started building this in 2005, had it completed in 2007, and uh, here we are, open to everybody who wants to come and enjoy this beautiful natural environment. This is a hotel resort? This is a, a vacation rental. Okay, and how many vacation rentals? We have seven. Seven vacation yes, rentals? Yes, and they're, they're self-contained homes, so you can come here and do your own cooking if you want, or you can come here and enjoy a great meal at the restaurant here. So I'm here visiting during the low season. Is this the low season for yes. visitors? Yes, it is. Uh, October, November is always very slow. It seems like it's still very busy. Uh, Sundays it's just busy because all of these beautiful people are Sabanios come up here from the city to enjoy our beautiful natural resort here. If I had to brand <coughs> in this country something of marketing, I would always say Honduras for wellness, Honduras for health. You seem to offer that right here. There is a sense of tranquility that could be offered here. That's a welcome respite from the city life. Absolutely. Although we're, we're not far from the city, we might as well be on the moon because this is completely disconnected other than a very short road, mm -hmm. which, uh, as you've found out, is fairly difficult to get, it's get a up here. Bumpy. And, yeah, it's a little bumpy like the river yeah. here. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yeah, yeah. But it's extremely safe here. I feel oh, very comfortable here. One hundred percent, yeah. I've been here 17, 18 years now, never had a problem. My uh, tourists never had a problem. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, uh, it goes against the, the, uh, the, the, the reputation of Honduras, which is uh, unfortunately a little bit biased towards uh, situations, illegal situations that people get involved with. But if you're a, a tourist coming to enjoy Honduras, the islands, the valley, uh, the ruins, no problem, none. What activities are there here for the tourists? I experienced whitewater rafting for the very first time in my life. Loved it, great experience, Yep. but there's more to do here. Uh, we have zip lining, horseback riding. Uh, we have tours to Cayos Cochinos. We have tours to Cacao Lagoon, uh, Cuero y Salado, uh, hiking, and of course rafting. Mm -hmm. And what else? I think that's about, oh, mountain biking. The other uh, benefit, if you will, of the mainland, this part of the mainland, is very close to the islands. So we get a lot of people coming here, and then let's say going to Utila for diving, or Roatan for the beaches, or whatever. So we're part of, the, uh, of that, if you will, triangle mm -hmm. of uh, tourist destinations. I think your future is going to be very bright. What's going to be happening in this area? if you had a crystal ball for the next three, four, or five years? Uh, we just, basically we have to hope that, uh, that the country progresses in a, in a positive fashion. We're hoping that, uh, that uh, maybe the US, maybe the Europeans, maybe uh, other benefactors will look kindly on Honduras. Uh, we need business. We need manufacturing. We need uh, jobs for the people, our people in Honduras. We need jobs and uh, uh, we're just hoping that people will understand that we have a great workforce here, good people, good honest people, hard-working people. Uh, that is what I see is essential for the future of Honduras. Yeah. It's the people. And I'm experiencing some great people everywhere I go. They're great people. They're absolutely, they're yeah. articulate, they're respectful, yeah. they're ready to work. They're honest. Love them. They're honest. Absolutely. Yeah. Richard, thank you very much for your time. It's You're been welcome. a great experience. Cheers. I look forward to coming back here with more people. I hope so. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. All right. Thank you, thank you. Like its neighboring country, Guatemala to the north and El Salvador to the west, Honduras sits at the crossroad of tourism, trade, and industry. Its proximity to its largest trading partner, the United States, offers a great deal of room to expand, especially with regards to reducing carbon footprint in an era of climate change. Never once did I experience any event that threatened the safety of my film crew or myself. My biggest challenge was navigating the roads at night during heavy tropical rainfall. 
Hotel accommodations, whether it be in Utila, Pico Bonito National Park, La Ceiba, or San Pedro Sula, are charming and economical. There's no need to enclose yourself in an all-inclusive resort. Experience everything, including the people of Honduras. I'm more of a zip lining canopy kind of a guy, but I must admit that was an adrenaline rush for me to be on a white water rafting experience. Honduras has a lot of experiences to be enjoyed right here. Travel with purpose, explore more with me, the best of Central America. I'll see you next time. of Honduras, a real Spanish fort that would make the, uh, damn it. <laughs>